an event partner for this event, uh, Ben Hart Office Interiors, who initiated this great program. Without them, we wouldn't have it actually. So Sydney and team, thank you very much. Our event today is how to use LinkedIn to engage and leverage your network. It is being conducted by Nick Lucessen, who I will say is very modest, so I got to keep this short. Uh, Nick is the owner of Amplify OSM. He works across the country with all the top brokerage, architecture, and PM firms, helping them better utilize LinkedIn as an effective tool to build business. We are encouraging this to be interactive, so please don't hesitate to ask a question or post in the chat function. I'll tell you, we have a lot of uh, participants, so we may have to quell that a little bit. But without further ado, uh, Nick, I hand it off to you, and uh, let's get started. Thanks, buddy. I uh, appreciate everybody coming on today. Um, ben Har is a, is a great client of mine. I help them with like HubSpot and LinkedIn and sales strategies, and I really enjoy them and uh, working with them as a client. And today, I'm super excited to be here. I've done these uh, every day for the last like two and a half uh, months uh, online, but I used to be a board member of Cornet down in Philly. So today's special for me to be able to be a part of uh, this uh, group today up in New York City. So what we're going to do is uh, kind of work through our LinkedIn social selling index, which maybe some of you have never heard of, but I'll share my screen and we'll get started. So I don't know if anybody's ever seen this screen before. Most people that I teach LinkedIn to have never heard of it nor seen it. Uh, every single person on LinkedIn has this. All you have to do is go to www.linkedin.com slash sales slash SSI, okay? So have LinkedIn open, open up a new tab. You can copy this in and you'll find out your score. So uh, as you can see, I'm top ranked 1% uh, of my industry, 1% of my network. And what we're gonna talk about is these four scores on the right hand side, the four components, which gets you at 81 out of 100. So establishing your professional brand, finding the right people, <clears throat> engaging with insights and building relationships. I typically teach an hour on each of these subjects, but today we're gonna try to do that in 15 minutes. <laughs> So we're not going to be doing the, uh, the full course, but there's a lot of highlights that I think everybody will, will really, really enjoy. So this score to me is the easiest way to understand where you're at. Uh, I recently partnered with Ken Ashley from uh, Cushman and Wakefield down in Georgia. Um, and we created the hashtag CREI influencer list for commercial real estate brokers across the country. So that list is going to be coming out in January. I'm really excited. And this score is a big part of who gets selected as the top brokers. Uh, on LinkedIn. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of jump in to talk about establishing your professional brand, which is your profile. Okay. So what's really, really important about your profile, which for me is, is really, really important is your banner. Everybody forgets about their banner. So your banner is your most important piece of real estate on LinkedIn. I cannot stress that enough. It's the first thing people see it tells a story and it gives you an opportunity to leave a first impression, okay? So if you don't have a banner, I highly recommend you create some type of photo with your logo on the right corner. I don't recommend it on the left because that's where your headshot is and the sizes are different between the company page banner and your profile banner. So to me, it's really, really important. I believe your profile is your digital business card, okay? Anytime somebody views this, LinkedIn will tell you how many views you get in 90 days. That's like you handed out a digital business card, okay? So you want to make sure your business card looks good. So you need to clean it up, okay? So the banner is really, really important. Your title, make sure you have your education, where you work for, and have a good about section. So what I'm gonna show you next is just another example of a banner. So I had the, the privilege of working with Corgan. Uh, they're about a 700 person architecture firm across the country to help their BD team use LinkedIn more. So they created tons of banners for all over the country, for all of their different divisions, all of their different uh, teams. And um, you know, it was really, really important for them to have that branding aspect. So the banner doesn't have to be the same. I've also worked with Colliers in Philadelphia to create lots of banners uh, for all their different, you know, industrial or retail or office. So your banner 
super, super important. Uh, something you guys really want to focus on and you really want to update. So I'm going to show you next is recommendations. I, I had wrote an article recently that I posted on my, um, on my, in my uh, feed and it talked about only you only have to do three things on LinkedIn. You have to ask for recommendations, ask for introductions and post consistently. So what I find very like cool about LinkedIn is anytime you do something well, you get a lease signed, you finish a project. Um, people want to tell you that you've done a good job and then you can turn it into marketing material, but they don't know where to put it. So it's really good to use your recommendation section on LinkedIn. So you have like Jeff Peck, I've known Mark for 10 years. It's the simplest way to convene how I feel about Mark is he does what he says he's going to do. That's a good feeling when I refer Mark to one of my clients. I know Mark will make me look good and take care of my client. Mark is not about the last dollar. He's all about adding value to relationships. Glad to have Mark on the team. So if Mark shares that or somebody sees that, that's another broker that maybe will lead to more referrals. So asking for recommendations for me is really about asking it from influencers and past and current clients. I'm not a huge fan of just anybody writing you recommendations, um, you know, but I think they're very powerful. Uh, to me, it's one of the most important. And then when, if somebody is willing to write you a recommendation, they're probably willing to make an introduction for you to their network. And that to me is the first step. Um, I'm not going to get into it today, but what I recommend is when you ask for a recommendation, there's a link that's created. Take that link and email it to that person because they may not be on LinkedIn as much and they may never see that you asked. So you, I can teach that later on, but it's really important that you email that link. So a couple next things that I wanna talk about is just what people's current posting strategies are. So when you think about LinkedIn, this was monumental for all of my clients. Everybody, sh and, and again, uh, everybody has their own opinions on this, but it's kind of just the algorithm. Everybody's taught share the company page, everybody. Every marketing department teaches it, every company teaches it. It's a complete waste of time, 90% of the time. It just is. You should never share a post. It just doesn't help you from getting engagement. So this same post right here, okay? This is the same post and she has 46 likes and six comments. So this post had four likes, okay? She shared the same post, company page, posted herself, 46 likes. LinkedIn does not put, does not put your post in front of your connections, doesn't put it in front of other people. So when you share the company page, it doesn't really work. And we'll get into engaging with insights a little later, um, but this is just a main flaw around establishing your professional brand. I really want to point out early is just making sure that everybody really, really works through, um, you know, this section. So what I'm going to go do next is just talk about a little bit more on establishing your professional brand and your profile. So to me, the featured section is something that everybody wastes. Nobody really uses it. Uh, it's very, very important to add a featured section. I always like to rotate my post in and out of this section, okay? The reason why it's so important to me is it's a digital business card, right? I'm posting on LinkedIn, people are seeing what I'm doing, they're gonna go on to view who I am, they get to my profile, and as they scroll down, they see the banner, they see the about, and they get hit with the feature. So if there's any projects that you've recently completed, any things that are really good post, any media that you wanna post, you can do that. Now, a lot of people won't have this section on their LinkedIn. So you have to go to add profile section and then you have to go to feature to make sure that you can see it. So then you can hit the ad and you can remove it each month and add a new one. But again, your profile is super important. So you got to make sure it looks good. So this to me is the most important number on LinkedIn by far. I don't, the LinkedIn social selling index is cool. Um, you know, there's a lot of cool numbers we can get into. Um, but this number to me is what companies should measure for BD people or anybody who's looking for engagement, the number of profile views. That means everything you did on LinkedIn worked. You directed people, just like if you went to a website, every ad word you pay, everything you're doing, this got results. So if you're looking to see how you do, look at how many views you had on your profile in 90 days. 
If you pay for Sales Navigator, you can actually see who viewed your profile. And there's a lot of other really fun things. So when we kind of get in here, you have your experience. Just make sure you have all of your experience on your, on your page. Make sure you have all of your education. Make sure you have all of your volunteer. You can have certifications. And then this one, I just want to show you guys because it's kind of funny. Um, everybody, sometimes when they switch careers, brokers, especially for some reason, when they're first in the business, they all have like, they're really good at Excel. I, I find it kind of interesting for some odd reason, or they're good at Salesforce or some weird things. So this is a weird section. I think it's a wasted section on LinkedIn. I think they could do a better job, but you never delete your skill. You just have to unpin. I just want to make sure I point that out. So unpin, repin, it's really important. If you delete it, it gets rid of your skill. You can type anything you want as a skill and it kind of goes in there. So, so that's going to be establishing your professional brand. Uh, as you can see, we have 64 recommendations on my profile, you know, from clients in California, New York, Texas, all over. It shows that I do a good job. So it's really important that everybody kind of starts adding them. Um, what I would like to do next is kind of open it up for any questions on that section. Does anybody have any questions? You can just unmute and ask. Nick, I had one regarding the shared. And if if you've got, say, a company post, rather than sharing it, can is there a feature to be able to like copy and paste it to your post? Yep. So you can always, if it's a link that was created, you can just take that link and post it. You can save the pictures to your desktop and post the pictures. But LinkedIn posting is really about your role within the company. And so in the next section, the third section we'll get into, um, I, I will kind of go into more how to create a LinkedIn posting strategy around your brand and how to really engage your audience. So, but yes. All right. So we're going to move to section two, finding the right people. Okay. Uh, to me, <laughs> this is where the money's made, okay? So it's the most uh, important section uh, for me. And to me, it's, it's just really, really important that everybody um, kind of learns this section, okay? And this may just take a second to load. All right, so sometimes with Zoom and LinkedIn, it kind of takes a little bit to load. So I apologize for that. So now everything's kind of ready. So what's really important with LinkedIn is to engage people who already know you, okay? LinkedIn is nothing more than digital networking, okay? So nothing I wanna teach you guys is really about, you know, cold calling or randomly reaching out to people. Um, LinkedIn has created LinkedIn Sales Navigator as just an amazing filter. It's just, it saves you so much time and so much energy and so much ab abilities that you get from this. It's invaluable. It's 80 bucks a month, but I'm going to use this from a teaching perspective to just teach, I think, the right way. So when you use this system, I recommend you always leverage all of your past and current clients, okay? Ones that wrote you recommendations, I have a client that's an accounting firm down in Texas and I was writing her sales strategy for her. And I said, you know, what's the, how many clients you have? And she's like 300. I'm like, do you think a hundred of them would introduce you to new clients? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, do you think they know who to? She's like, no. So you can use LinkedIn to come into this system. And you can use this connection button right here to identify people that Mark knows that I would like to meet. So it's really important to use the filter sections of LinkedIn. I can then go down to certain company headcounts. If I'm looking for managing partners at law firms, if I'm looking for titles of president, I can just type it in. If I'm using looking for certain seniority levels of owner or partner, and there's a ton of other categories inside seniority level, which is still spinning, um, but we can go into. 
So I can look at who he's connected to from CBRE or JLL or other brokers that I want introductions to. So there's a lot of great features to kind of go in here. Uh, one of the things that's really, really important is if you ever use the word president, for some odd reason, LinkedIn, I don't know why, and I'll just show you guys as an example real quick. It's, LinkedIn's not a clean system. And I also really wanna stress that a lot. It's just, it's just not clean in the way that it's built. People put in whatever they want. And so LinkedIn spits it back out. So you have to do some research uh, when you're kind of going things. So you'll see in here that maybe the word vice president and we don't want vice presidents. So I don't know if anybody's ever heard of Boolean terms, which is the word not and or or, okay? So you just type in not vice. And then when you go enter, all the vice presidents go away. So it allows that search to go down, which is great. Okay. You can save these people to different lists. Uh, there's a ton of different features that you can do in here. So to me, that's step one, just leveraging your past and current clients. When you're trying to find the right people say, Hey, Mark, I see you're connected to Jerry. Do you know him? Well, do you mind if we all go golfing? Could you set that up? Do you mind if we all go to lunch? Could you set that up? Could you make an email introduction? Whatever it is you can kind of use as the ask, but leveraging your past and current clients is the easiest way to grow your business. They want to help you. They just don't know how. So it's really, really important. Okay. Now you can also do this in regular search. Okay. So if you're inside here, you can go in here and you can type in anybody you want and it works the same. It's just a different setup and it doesn't do headcount and it doesn't have all of the features of Sales Navigator. So you can come down here, certain titles, certain industries, if I wanna look at everybody in architecture firms or any real estates. So down here, same thing, titles. So you can do all the same searching in Sales Navigator to some degree, it just isn't as nice. You can't save things, can't use headcount, can't use lots of words that you wanna save, can't use the Boolean terms, a lot of different things you can't do. So the next thing that I recommend is leveraging your strategic alliances, people that you can have 12 of, people that you meet with, let's say once a month and you make two introductions or set two meetings for each other a month, do the same thing. You can go through the networks. The other fun things is just searching for companies. So if you're looking for specific companies, um, you can type it in. I think this was one of the funniest things that I've ever seen. Uh, I was working with C2C Edge in New York City and we were looking for Netflix and we looked at all the employees and we wanted to meet the chief marketing officer. Now the chief marketing officer down here is connected to a priest that my client was, was friends with. So she could ask a, a priest that she knows to make an introduction to the chief marketing officer of Netflix. You never know who's connected to who on LinkedIn and who can help you make introductions. So we can search companies, we can search certain titles, and then we can see who in our network could possibly make them introductions. So I call it cold calling for introductions. So let's use, for instance, John. All right, John. Yeah, that's fine. All right. So I have 95 mutual connections. Let's say I really, really, really want to meet John. Okay. And it's like my sole goal in life to do so. Okay. But I don't know. Him. So I could go through all 95 of these people and I could ask all of them, Hey Jack, do you know John? Well, would you help me set up a meeting? No, I don't. But here's his cell phone number. Hey, Sheena, do you know John? Well, no, but here's his email address. I could go through all 95. I get to the 95th person where best friends or kids play sports together. Happy to set something up. I call that cold calling for introductions because the reality is, is most people don't know the people they're connected to, but they may have something. They may know John likes eating at a certain restaurant. They may know something that I don't know. So it's really important to go through that um, and look through your network to see who can help you. So we have past and current clients. We have strategic alliances. We can search specific companies. We can search specific people, okay? And one of my favorites to do is searching your alumni. So a lot of people forget 
that the easiest bonding and rapport out there is your alumni network. So you can build different databases on LinkedIn by going to school. And you can type in any school. You can type in Penn State University. Okay. 450,000 people went there. You can do it by a certain industry, certain types of relationships. We can see by the group button, okay, who went to Penn State and is part of Cornet Global. There's 48 people. So you can bond over the fact that you went to the same school and that you're part of the same group, okay? So groups is a really cool feature to identify how you can bond with people. You can do it by certain titles, certain company headcounts. You can say, I just wanna understand who the CEOs are of companies that went to Penn State with a company headcount of 500 to 1,000. There's 68 and you can build that list. You always have to clean it. Uh, I'll show you guys real quick just so you understand what I mean. LinkedIn only puts in what we tell it. So, you know, you have to kind of go over this. You can look at the company, see if anything pops up and kind of go through and kind of click into it and do say, do they really have 500 employees? A lot of times it's not always accurate. So you just want to kind of go through and see how much of that is, is real or not. Uh, by going into these companies, you would click it, and then you can see how many employees they really have. So it's one of them things where, like this company right here, uh, this is an interesting one. They're actually growing substantially, uh, looking for new space in Philadelphia. Um, and there's a Collier's broker who's on it, John, <laughs> that I know. So, um, but you can see that they have 809 employees. I like to say that this number is plus or minus 10%. Either 10% of the people are no longer there, 10% of people are not on LinkedIn. But if they say that they work there, it's probably pretty valid. So we have past and current clients, our strategic alliances, we have companies and people, we have alumni, and then we can just create different types of prospect lists um, through you know, alumni networks or groups or whatever we want, certain companies we can do. You can just come in here and you can look for certain industries and say, I just wanna see people in apparel fashion I just want to see people that are in biotechnology, uh, whatever, and then CEOs and whatever you guys want, certain geographies, uh, certain first degree connections. So um, any questions from anybody regarding finding the right people? All right, so we will continue. Uh, finding the right people, as I said to me, uh, is one of the most important. Uh, I think it's just, you know, you got to learn how to engage and leverage your network and the search functionality um, inside LinkedIn um, is invaluable. People want to help you. Um, your clients want to help you. They just don't know how. Um, so you need to search, see who they're connected to uh, and ask for introductions. And then one of the things I will leave everybody with on that subject is do not, I cannot stress this enough, do not ask for introductions if you're not going to be grateful, okay? So here's what I mean by that. People have spent 30 years building relationships for you to just walk in the door and not have to cold call 200 times over four years. So if people are willing to make introductions, be grateful, show some way. I use an app called Thanks, T-H-N-K-S. Uh, if somebody makes an introduction, I send them like a $6 Starbucks coffee. I do a thanks a latte. <laughs> and uh, I think people appreciate it when they make intros. So it seems like we may have a question in the chat. Uh, yes, Debbie, that would be uh, through uh, the search. Um, if you have LinkedIn Sales Navigator, if you don't have it, um, you, would, you would have to use it. Um, just the regular search. But you can search here on the regular search and you can search anything you want from a filter section. Um, you can go in, you know, go to all filters and do the basic stuff. But the other stuff with like the groups and the company head counts uh, and all the other fun things is, is through Sales Navigator. But here um, we can go through first degree connections, second, uh, certain geographies, New York City, we could click. 
we could look at New York City, right? And then we could come down here and we could say um, law firms, we'll use this as a, an industry, we'll do law, I think it's law practice. Um, and then we can come down here and we can see who are the managing partners. <clears throat> and so there's three that I'm uh, connected to. So I might have did something wrong there uh, at the keywords. So, um, okay, reset. Sometimes LinkedIn, when you do too many searches, makes you like go back and reset the whole thing. So there's a couple glitches with it, but um, I can always refresh it and do it for you. Looks like another question. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we're going to move on to engaging with insights. Um, this is one of my uh, other favorite sections. They're all my favorite. I, I really enjoy uh, all of them. Um, but I'm going to stop sharing for a second and just kind of talk to everybody. So what I find very interesting about engaging with insights is the misconception on how many times you should post on LinkedIn. Uh, I don't like what most people have to say. So I recommend that you post once a week or twice a week. If you post more than twice a week, you are annoying, <laughs> okay? It's just like sending an email from, from your email marketing every day to somebody. People barely can handle the one a month, okay? So don't be the type of person that's posting every single thing you do on LinkedIn. Try to be strategic about it. Try to be thoughtful about it. Um, you don't wanna just always be sharing content because here's what happens. We wanna get to likes on LinkedIn, which I'm gonna show you in a second. And if you post it every day, people are gonna feel like they're stalking you if they liked everything you post, okay? So I think some people teach that you should post every day on LinkedIn I, I, or three times a day on LinkedIn, which is very annoying. So I highly recommend you post 52 times a year or 104. So we're gonna go into a Word document, okay? I have a completed one that I'm gonna show you at the end and then we're gonna work on one real quick so I can show you guys how to create a LinkedIn posting strategy. So what I would recommend when everybody's kind of, you know, you can do this right after this meeting. I try to make this as simple as possible, okay? So when you're creating your LinkedIn posting strategy, I recommend you first start with your goals. Is it 52 posts or is it 104? Once a week or twice a week. What I would like people to do next is to think about what is their LinkedIn brand, okay? So I think everybody has the same brand and it's easier for me to teach. It's the company you work for. It's your education. It's the same thing that's on your profile, by the way. It's your education. It's your community involvement. It's your associations, okay? And it's your publications. So what I recommend is figuring out how many posts you're going to do a year. I believe half of your posts should be about the company you work for and your role within it. You can have every quarter be a part of alumni group, especially with brokers. Um, an alumni group you're a part of, you golfing at an alumni group, you go into an event, posting about an upcoming event, posting about a project that was completed, a new gym, a new, a new library, uh, sharing your education so you can create that bonding and rapport to engage people that are like you. It's really, really important to share educational posts. Your community involvement. Um, it's a great date to go with your significant other to a gala every year. And it's also a great LinkedIn post uh, showing that you give back. People want to know they can trust you. So it's really, really important that you show your involvement in the community. So if you're on any boards, if you volunteer anywhere, anything you do, if you're running in a 5K, even a virtual one, it's always really good to share that you're a good person and that you give back. So you can do like six of them a year, right? And then you have associations. So if you're the type of person who is always going to events when we are you know, all vaccinated and can go back um, to it, you can post yourself at an event, find one other person, just write great event. Um, they get the most likes on LinkedIn when it's pictures of you because your connections only care about you. So when you think about your posting strategy, it's about you, your role within the company, 
your relation to your education, your role in the community, your role with your associations, which is any events you go to, any boards you're on, anything you, you're on any committees. Uh, so you just want to post about it to share holistically your brand with others. Okay. And then you have your publications. Uh, so you can say you can do, what do we have, 36? You can do like six of these maybe. So then what you really want to think about is your publications. These may be like BizNow or AIA articles, uh, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, whatever you follow, uh, the real deal. Um, sharing industry articles is a great way to show people you're engaged in the industry and your geography. So what you want to do is just think about these. We got 36, 42, and that can be 10. So after you think about that and you think about your content sources, right? And if we say from LinkedIn content sources, what we want to do is think about what we're willing to do. So if we think about our company, are you willing to write an article once a month? So if it's an article you write, you know, that's 12 posts about the company. It could be project photos. So they could be 12. Every time you finish a project, if you do 12 projects, or you, it, and to me, the best ones are you and your client in front of the company logo. It's really, really important. Uh, it could be client testimonials. And you can do four of them. So all of these will add up to 26 really fast. It could be a team photo. It could be you on site with a hard hat. I think they're the best. Uh, it could be a, a video with drone footage. It could be anything you want. And then the education we talked about and community involvement and all this. And then once you create your content sources, either pictures or videos or articles or graphics and what you're going to post, you just think about it, what you're going to do each month. So if we look at it, and again, if we're only going to do, you know, once a week, uh, we can say January, I think it's like the 5th. Let me check real quick. January 4th. What am I going to post on the 4th? I'm going to do an article. Oh. What am I going to do on January 11th? I'm going to post a community involvement. And that's going to be me volunteering for Cornettsville Abundance thing, right? And then on January 18th, I'm going to post a thing about an article that I really like. And then you can say something about, you know, some association. But I just want to kind of run everybody through that just very quickly, just so that they can get thinking like, what is, what, how do I think about what I want to post? And you just do that once a month. What am I going to post in the community, my community involvement, my associations, publications? And now I'm going to show you guys some examples of what, what that looks like. Okay. So this could be a project that you're highlighting. You can tag the architecture firm you worked with, the project management firm, the client, the other furniture vendors that were involved, and you can share the photo. So what I love is getting likes, okay? Um, I think they're very, very important from a finding the right people standpoint. Um, and I, and I, I, I'm surprised not a lot of people do this, but you wanna always click this button. Okay, so it says 174. You wanna click that and you wanna see who liked your post. And then you go in there and you can say, hey Bill, thanks for liking my post. It's been a while, it made me think of you. Let's schedule a call to catch up. You could go through your second degree connections and you can see who's second degrees and you can convert them to first, ask them to connect. Because if they liked your post, they're probably willing to connect with you. So when he's second or third degrees, I use the like as a conversion mechanism to grow my network. So really click this button. And you also wanna make sure you're commenting back. Uh, the more likes and comments a post gets, the longer it lives um, and the longer more people can see it. Um, so it's really important that these things grow. Um, what we're also going to share next is that would be project photos. This would be a commercial observer link so if you have the link, you may just want to share the link and then that image pops up. If the image isn't a full image, don't share the link. But you know, you got 238 likes, so the post worked. 
And then you have client testimonials. You can get that testimonial that was on your profile and turn it into a graphic to share with your audience. And we got 57 likes. So all these things are great ways to, you know, engage uh, with insights. Um, and then this is an article that I wrote. So you can write articles uh, for LinkedIn and I can show you guys how to write them as well. But it's really, really important to me writing articles because that shows your knowledge. Uh, to me, the article section on LinkedIn is one of the waste, most wasted sections. Uh, it's your own personal blog <laughs> that LinkedIn lets you have. So it's really, really important. Um, and then I pulled this one because uh, I did this last year with Tom. Uh, and this is a core net fill abundance, uh, sharing, showing that you care. You know, Tom's a head of real estate. Um, he's an end user, um, you know, and he got 100 likes and seven comments. So make sure you're, you know, sharing your, the way that you give back uh, to the community. Uh, and then this is my favorite cl client of all time. He's 75 years old. He's in Indiana. Uh, I've been working with him for, for two years, two and a half years. And he's like top 1% of in his industry and network. And he sets meetings all the time with me. We meet once a week still. Um, but here's a cool little video that he did. Um, and, and he's got drone footage. On this, uh... And what's really cool is he had an intern do the drone footage, okay? And put together the text that's under it. You don't have to have sophisticated marketing departments to do a really good job, okay? So it's really important that everybody try is my point, okay? It's not as hard as you think. Um, it's a lot easier than you think. And it's really, really important. So, and then this would be like an alumni type post. So I have an event coming up. I start at the alumni uh, network at my school and you can kind of post about it and engage your network. So I have a couple other things to show you guys regarding that but I wanted to open it up to questions on engaging with insights before we get into building relationships. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, waiting for a bunch of questions in this sec section. So anybody have any questions? Hey Nick, I have a question. Do you ever post the same content more than once? I've heard uh, some people recommend that. <laughs> You can always post it different. Are you talking about posting an event twice? Uh, maybe it's a piece of content just, just to post it, you know, at, at 7 a.m. one day and then at 5 p.m. the next day. Uh, it's, it's I would, I would not, post. I would not recommend that just because your, your audience probably doesn't want to see it twice. Uh, I would try to, again, try to, you know, have a strategy around it, posting different content. I had one lady do a, a really cool deal in Texas. She's a Cushman and Wakefield broker. And um, we took one deal and turned it into three different pieces of content. Uh, the case study, the testimonial, the project photos, she was highlighted in TEDx. Um, you can turn things into different types of content, but I wouldn't never post probably the same exact unless it was an event that you're... So one of the things that's kind of interesting is LinkedIn advertising is very expensive. So one of the things that I've, I've been doing is using my feed sometimes as like, using it as like an ad essentially. So, you know, using things as an ad can work, but you got to be careful of not to like be feel like your connections feel like you're spamming them. It's just really important to be authentic uh, on LinkedIn. Thank you. Uh, so somebody asked about LinkedIn stories. Um, I will get to that in a second, uh, Matt. Uh, just give me one second. It's definitely an interesting feature. Um, I do have to, you can't, I have to share my screen, so I'm gonna to have to pull up Zoom on my phone to do so, but I'll get into that because I'm gonna show you guys how to connect your phone and your calendar in the next segment. So I'll wait on that. Um, any other Hi, questions? Nick. Yeah, this is uh, Kristen Liu. I have a question regarding what you had said earlier about sharing posts, um, but a little twist. So I, what if you like to try and help other people who share posts that you know, you like, is it better to like and comment on it? And what exactly, why is the sharing, why does that not work? Great, great question. So you can always share any post. You just have to understand it's not considered one of your four or eight posts you're going to do from your strategy perspective, because LinkedIn's not going to put it in front of your connections. It could help your, like, 
like connections for you to like and comment and share, and you should do so. So another side of building relationships, we'll, which we'll get into, is you liking, commenting, and sharing on your prospects, on your influencers, mm -hmm. uh, on, on everybody. So it's, it is good to like, share, and comment on others' posts just from the algorithm standpoint, uh, as I showed with Susie, is LinkedIn just doesn't put it in front of other people. So you're not getting the impact that you would have as if you shared the content direct by you know posting it yourself. You can always share, um, there's nothing wrong with it. You just have to understand that the value isn't as great uh, and it's significantly less than if you would post the content yourself. Great, thanks for the clarification. Hey, uh, Nick, I have a question. Sure. Um, how do you make sure or, or how is it determined who your postings are put in front of. Uh, this this seems like uh, LinkedIn 101, but I don't even nope, know nope, nope. when I post <laughs> something. <laughs> no, that's like the uh, it's like the million dollar question uh, that okay. nobody knows to some degree. So here's how it works. LinkedIn, I can share my screen with this a little bit and give you some insight into it. So let's go back. And I apologize if there's any lag. Um, mm -hmm. Pick this up. There you go. There's uh, Claudia on site with a construction hat. Perfect timing. <laughs> so, great job, Claudia. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't plan that, obviously. Um, so, when you do a post, um, and I'm going to show this in the next section a little bit. But when you, when you do a post, you have these hashtags and you have your connections and all that. But inside this, and this is a LinkedIn feature that I hate, if you try to click this button, you can't get into it. But if you click this button, your followers, and then you click back, then you can get into it. Stupid, I didn't create LinkedIn, I'm only teaching it, right? So whoever you follow, that will help them see your post. Whoever's following you will help them see your post. So I can say, I don't want to follow this person. I can still be connected, but I won't see their post. So who you're connected to, the algorithm will help them see it. Um, and then these are, we'll jump into section two a little bit, building relationships. I, I teach this next, but you, you use hashtags. So the hashtag real estate, this is one of my favorite things. Everybody uses hashtag wrong, and, and it's one of my pet peeves, so I apologize. But the hashtag real estate has 4 million followers, so I don't understand why people make up hashtags. You shouldn't make up hashtags. They have real value and real followers, and so this helps LinkedIn determine where to put your post. So you should use three hashtags max, and you should pick ones that are related to the post. So hashtag real estate, if you're doing, you know, we'll just kind of go through the different brand categories. Hashtag education. This has 9 million followers. Let's say we were doing a, an association type post and we were out. And you guys can search any of these hashtags by just going in and typing hashtag in any word possible. And you can see how many people follow them. It's uh, frozen a little bit, so I apologize. Hashtag never think is like 14 million. 3 million, 3 million followers. So they're all, all these things help. And then going on the nonprofit work, community involvement, my favorite one that has the most is fundraising. It's better than charity. It's better than nonprofits, got close to 6 million. So all of these, you can see that when I click these different things come up because LinkedIn categorizes them based off of hashtags. Um, and then what's really interesting, and this is one of my favorites to show, So you have pharmaceutical, this is, this is incredible to me, which has 72,000, okay? Now, if I was going to do this and I add just an S, just an S, it's got a million. So why would you ever use pharmaceutical? You should always use pharmaceuticals because there's way more followers. So the hashtags, your connections, and then I'll just show you, if I was going to do like a post, you can always do the at symbol. And I can do my good friend, John. And I could tag him. He'll get notified. 
that there's a post that I did. So he's more likely to see it. So you could tag people and companies that are related to the article um, for that. So hashtags, your connections um, are all things that work. Does that answer your question? I think it was Michael. Mike? Yeah, I think that answers his question. Yeah, you have. Sorry, I was struggling with my unmute key there. No worries. So we got about 12 minutes left. <laughs> so we got to keep going. Uh, but that's the hashtag section. I'm going to um, maybe have to move things a little faster because uh, I want to show you guys something that's super duper important. And then if we have time for um, us to do the stories, I will. And if we have time for me to show my phone to do that, we will, but we may have to hold off on that one. All right. So what's really important is building relationships. So now we're in step four. Okay. Uh, what's really, really important for, I think, everybody to, re to remember is that they already have a network. Okay. Everybody already has a network and that's your my network button, which is where I teach in session four. So everybody has connections. They can accept them when they come up here. You always want to manage that, make sure it's going well uh, and clean because sometimes that can get a lot, but you want to click into your connections. Okay. And you can do this in sales navigator. You can do this in regular search. It doesn't really matter, but it's really important to search with filters. Okay. And it's really important to go through the brokers, the architects, the end users, everybody you already know, and to say, hey, Emily, it's been a while. We should schedule a call to catch up. It's really important that you leverage and engage your existing network to set meetings. So this is always going to be your first degree button. That means you're already connected. And I may want to look in Philadelphia or I may want to look in New York. I may want to work at look at Collier's and I may want to look at a certain titles or whatever. And I may want to look at certain names, whatever it is. And I'm going to hit show results. So in New York City, I have 31 people at Collier's that I'm connected to. So instead of me going out and trying to build new relationships or, um, you know, there's 31 people I can just say, and I like to say when you're connected, it opens up a marketing channel. So you can always call, you can always email, but when you're connected on LinkedIn, this message button is gold, right? So I can say, hey, Sheena, it's, you know, it's great, you know, working with you this year to help you with LinkedIn. Um, you know, do you mind if we schedule a call to catch up or Aiden or Jack who was on our team, but it could be Frank, it could be Jason who I met with the other day, um, you know, or Joe. So when I did like their, their nationwide training, but it's really important to have that marketing channel. So having first degree connections and super, super important. So I'm going to stop sharing for one second, just to emphasize this point. If you are not connected to all of your past and current clients on LinkedIn, please right after the call, make sure you do so. It's extremely important because that marketing channel is closed, okay? You cannot ask for recommendations. You cannot know how to ask for introductions and that marketing channel, the message them is closed, okay? So you wanna go through LinkedIn and make sure you're connected to all your past and current clients. You're gonna make sure you're connected to all your influencers and your entire network. So it's really, really important to do that because if that marketing channel is closed, we can't do anything we talk today. <laughs> so if you're not connected, make sure you do. Uh, this is a little advanced, but I think you guys will find it highly enjoyable. So I'm gonna share this with you guys. So inside my network, you have this very interesting button on the bottom left corner called your contact import is ready, okay? And you have a more options button, all right? So you can always click oh, this button right here and there's an arrow pointing up where you can upload a file. LinkedIn used to let you spam people and invite anybody, they don't do that anymore. But what you can do is you can turn all of your emails that you have in your CRM into a text file. And I'm gonna have to teach this like in person if anybody wants to really learn, but I'm just showing you for, you know, to get you guys excited about it. You can click that button and you can upload it. So you can upload emails to LinkedIn and LinkedIn will find them emails if they're on LinkedIn and create a list for you to see you can have all your past and current clients or whatever. And you can pay an admin to go through and just say, go connect with people that have emailed. You can export out your entire Outlook contacts and upload it to LinkedIn. 
So you can come here and you can click buttons. I typically skip this, this section right here, uh, but you can do it if you like. Um, and then you always skip this. These are people whose email addresses are not on LinkedIn. So you're inviting them to join LinkedIn. And then you go done for now. And then inside the contact section, that list will populate that you just opened up. And you can connect your phone. You can do upload at contacts, which is what we just did. And you can go through and you can hit connect. People that you haven't, oh, I should be connected to this person, I'm not. I should be connected to this person, I'm not. You can just hit connect. Message means you're already connected. Invite means they're not on LinkedIn. So it's just a great way to go through just real quick and make sure you're inviting people that you've at some point sent emails to or have a reason uh, to kind of update. So it's just a really cool feature um, to do. So I think we have some time for me to do it. So I'm gonna switch over to my phone to show you guys about LinkedIn stories. Everybody's really interested in it. It's kind of cool. It's like Instagram. And uh, John, can I share my phone? You guys gonna give me permission for that? Yeah, I'll see why not. Okay. Marissa, Marissa, there's no problem, right? I don't think so. All right. Can I get rid of this? Nick, we can't hear you. Yeah, Nick, we just lost your audio. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. All right, sorry about that. It went to mute. So inside here on the top left corner is my picture, okay? You can always go to settings. Oh. See if uh, looks like LinkedIn's not working today. But inside there, you can connect your phone. So just kind of go there when LinkedIn's working, go to settings, and then you can connect. So right now, it's just not allowing it. Um, but the story section um, it is a little bit interesting. So it's just on the top left here. You would go to your story. Um, you can take a picture of whatever you want to take. Um, you can upload any pictures that you want. Um, and then what you could do is you can use these buttons to kind of put in any ads or mentions uh, or anything you want uh, of the company. So it's just like Instagram. There's really nothing super special about it. You, it's ha you can only do it on your phone. Um, you can view people's content that's on here, just like Instagram. You can kind of slide through and see what Dan's up to. He's a broker out in Las Vegas. Um, nothing super crazy about it. It's just like Instagram. That's all. So let me see if I can get out of this. Oh. And then get out of this. All right, can you guys hear me again? All right. I'm always a little nervous to do that, to switch to the phone, but <laughs> sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But the stories is just a section like Instagram where you can kind of just add anything and kind of, you know, do multiple pictures and things like that. I, I give more freedom of doing that as much as you can. So, uh, so somebody has a question. Kelly said, can't believe how helpful this is. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, can you show everyone how to put your voice on your profile to say your name? What? Uh, oh, it's a, uh, I don't, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, so we have about four minutes left. Um, I'm going to show you guys my favorite thing and then we'll leave it up for like one or two questions. Okay. So if you're connected with me, I wake up every morning at 7am or whatever I wake up and I come in here and wish people happy birthday. Not everybody, just people I want to, but I fixed all of my notification settings because the notifications can be, be horrible. You can get everything. So I leave on like uh, certain things that I want to see. Um, and then, you know, you can kind of get rid of anything else that you want to get rid of. So anniversaries or birthdays, 
because I think it's from building relationships. It's really, really important um, to engage your network when it's their birthday. So I just come in here, see who's celebrating, and I'll just send people, you know, happy birthday messages that I want to. Not everybody, just ones I want to. So I think it's really, people really appreciate it when you wish them happy birthday, especially if you're looking to build relationships, you should really do so to your network. So we covered a lot in a short amount of time and it only takes four hours. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed it. We have about two minutes left. Any quick questions? I don't know who, uh, I think it's going on YouTube, Cornette's posting it or something like that. That's right. Yeah. This, this has been for whoever asked that. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't see the name. Um, this is recording and you can have access to it. Yeah. But I'd rather you hire me and pay me $1,500 <laughs> to train 20 of your people and go through my four session course. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. Any questions? Can I just ask uh, what is uh, the second tier, the second connection and the third connection? What is that? Yep. So a first connection means somebody accepted your connection request, kind of like a Facebook friend or, and, you know, somebody's following you on Instagram. Um, a second degree means that somebody in your network is connected to that person. So I may want to meet John and Sheena's connected to him. He would be a second degree connection if he wasn't already a first. And then a third degree means nobody in your network is connected to that person. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. So we have maybe one more question before one o'clock. Any other questions? I, I have one, Mike, Aaron, again. Uh, how, what's the difference between connect and message when you when you see that option come up? Um, are you familiar with what I'm talking about? Sometimes you see, uh, you know, 20 faces come up on the screen. Some of them say connect, some of them say message. So not sure why the difference. You mean like in here in network when somebody like requests to connect with you? No, Nick, it's like on their profile. I think when it says message, you're already friends with them. Oh, okay. That, okay. Yeah. So if you're, if you're looking through there, uh, if it says message, that means you're already connected. And if it says connect, it means you have to connect. You can't message somebody. That marketing channel is closed if you're not connected. I got it. Okay. Thank you. All right, guys, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, you can connect with me on LinkedIn and we can go from there. And uh, Nick, this was great. Uh, thank you very much. You definitely covered a lot of ground in an hour. Um, as, as Nick alluded to, if you want to talk to him longer or, or hire him for your team, I know I'm doing it for my team. We're talking about it. Um, please feel free to reach out. As you can see, what he covered in a short period of time, just imagine what you'll get out of it for the uh, program that he does in full. So thank you very much for attending. We had a great turnout. And if some of you I don't speak to before the end of the year, you know, have, have a great holiday and I'll see you in the new year. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.